right, so welcome back. This is part two of our discussion. Now, um, obviously, if you missed part one, then if you'd like to introduce, introduce yourself again. Yeah, uh, what's up? I'm, I'm Ayo. Uh, went to six one with uh, the Fashion Archive here, so uh, I'm around. So we just thought it'd be cool to shoot uh, like a cool discussion video together. Yeah. So right now we're talking about the Nigerian streetwear scene. Now, obviously, some of you might not know, but I lived in Nigeria for quite a while. And a lot of people think Africa is some place where, like, I don't know, there's some desert and there's no scene of anything. <laughs> and there's actually, like, a big music culture. There's a big streetwear and, like, fashion scene in Nigeria. So we're just basically going to talk about it. So Yeah, um, I'm going to kick us off with uh, two uh, British-Nigerian... Uh, brands so these brands are made by people of british nigerian heritage um they're streetwear brands uh the first one is uh cortez um started by um clint 409 on instagram um really really dope brand dope aesthetic uh streetwear stuff obviously very cozy and the whole idea behind this brand is about you know taking charge of your own life um not being somebody that works like a lazy nine to five and being stuck in the jail of a rat race, but actually taking charge of your life and ruling the world and doing what you want. His slogan for his brand is um, Cortez rules the world. Uh, it's, it's Cortez spelt with uh, C R O T E I Z. Um, I'm sure we can pull up the Instagram on oh, the yeah, sure. uh, So, yeah, that's the first one. Uh, the second one uh, is Jehuko. Um, Shoewear brand started by um, another guy of British Nigerian heritage, uh, Ime, Ime 4K on Instagram. Um, his brand has got like the dope like 3M prints and uh, the smiley face on the back. And he's all about like redefining um, what urban streetwear is and what it's supposed to be. Like he, over, like this last summer, um, he chose to Put his brand logo and imagery on utility vests, which I thought was pretty interesting, and I hadn't seen from the kind of independent shoe we're seeing before. So I think those two would be two to definitely check out. And then um, if we move on to some uh, Nigerian um, Nigerian brands, and brands that actually come out of the land of Nigeria. So we have um, uh, Vivendi. Uh, obviously, these guys are the big boys. <laughs> yeah, the big boys. They got they got the cosign from Virgil. Got the got the cosign jersey. from Skepta. Yeah, Wizkid. yeah, from Skep. Yeah, they got the, they got the um, they got the jersey with Virgil as well. The yeah. off white, the off white Vivendi jersey. Um, so they're they're like they're, they're again they're like a they're like a mix between the two, but they use like cut and sew material mostly. Um, not mostly, but on certain pieces and. And yeah, they're, they're they're really dope. You should check out. You should check them out on uh, Instagram too. And then um, there's another one that's really uh, coming up uh, called Pieces. Uh, I think his Instagram username is Pieces Unique, and um, they just focus on denim and doing dope denim things. So like quite similar to uh, Val Christopher or Lewis Andrew, if you're familiar with like uh, mm -hmm. UK denim uh, people that work with denim in the UK. Uh, this is a Nigerian brand that is aiming to do something um, similar. Uh, because they work on denim, like you kind of get that unique feel of like each piece is like one of one almost. You feel like you're wearing like a one of one piece uh, yeah. with these guys. And then the other two. That's like our motherland. Yeah, our that's motherland. That's like the skate, yeah. Uh, that's like the skate brand. So yeah. Nigeria does have a skate scene that is uh, growing and. Uh, these guys are out there capturing it. They're a collective. They don't just do um, clothes. Like they do videos. Again, like they spend their time skating in Nigeria. Um, yeah, they've got some. They they had a pop up in in London, I think, uh, recently. And Skepta came through. A whole bunch of guys came through to their pop up. So they're doing amazing things as well. Uh, check them out on Instagram too. I think. Uh, and then the last one. Uh, home delivery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, home delivery is one that uh, started recently too. Um, their whole brand aesthetic is about dope, bold graphics on the front of tees. Um, uh, very cartoony, very off the wall kind of style. Uh, again, very unique. And yeah, it's a brand hailing from Nigeria. So I definitely recommend you to check those out. So like now that we've run through the brands, like. What do you think are like some of the 
like key hallmarks of uh of, of the nigerian streetwear scene and like what should people uh, not only look out for but yeah w w what in your opinion is like the best and yeah w what do you think are the hallmarks of the nigerian yeah. streetwear scene as it is right now well i mean it's it's really growing the thing is um it's kind of like based in different places all these streetwear um designers um they're focused in Nigeria, but some of them go to university in England, some yeah. go to university in America, yeah. some go to university in Toronto, Canada. So it's like they have pop-ups in all these different places. You can catch a pop-up in London and Nigeria, anywhere. And obviously the big brand in Nigeria is probably Vivendi, isn't it? Yeah. That's like the biggest brand. They've had the Kosan by WizKid, they've had the Off-White jerseys, the Nike collab, they've yeah. had all the big projects. And I think they're one of the first, like, Nigerian based brands to really like start this new wave of yeah. um, Nigerians getting more interested in design and stuff. Yeah. And um, it's crazy rebellion because obviously growing up in an African household or Nigerian, <laughs> you know, you have to be an engineer, facts. a doctor, facts. or what's the, what's the, lawyer. Lawyer. Yeah, facts. So, facts. And if you're not one of those, then you're a failure. <laughs> so the fact that these kids are actually being creative, now the creative yeah. scene is buzzing. And I think that now that there's a growth of the creative scene, um, African parents will kind of like, you know, take it more seriously, the creative stuff, and think that the only way to success is not just engineering, yeah. being a doctor or being yeah. a lawyer. So yeah, I'm really feeling and what's I, going. And I think like, um, I, you're definitely your point about Vivendi is true. Like they, they even got posted onto, um, one of their models was wearing uh, their stuff on one of the uh, fashion weeks, I think, in Milan, and they got posted onto uh, Vogue's official Instagram. So yeah. they're really like pushing the pushing the high end fashion kind of side of things right. when it comes to Nigeria. Um, but that's not to say to ignore the streetwear stuff that's going on as well, and like um, especially the the British uh, Nigerian kids too, because. They putting out some. They're putting out some really, really, really dope, dope things. And uh, like, like you were saying earlier, you know, coming from an African household, listen, you gotta be a doctor, lawyer, <laughs> engineer. But these brands, like some of their identity and some of the messages that they push, like, is actually like completely contradictory to that. It's like you know, yeah. Like I said with Cortez earlier, like their whole thing is Cortez rules the world. Like go out there and rule the world. Do what you want. Don't let anybody tell you what box you deserve to belong in and I think uh, when people look for uh, a hallmark in the Nigerian streetwear scene maybe they should be looking for that voice of like rebellion as well yeah I feel you and like not being labelled or put in a box but actually being able to do what you want and then one last one uh, one additional one to mention um, Collider Fail uh, on Instagram is Collider Fail with an underscore on the end um, again, done by another British Nigerian guy. Uh, his uh, username is Pray to Leslie. Uh, his pieces are very centered around like political uh, undertones and political ideology, and uh, his meanings are very, very layered. There's like, a lot of layers to the meanings to his clothes, and he's very philosophical. I think that thinking man's approach again is. Um, part of that rebellious spirit that we were talking about earlier so um, if you are looking for other guys as well definitely check him out too all right so i was just editing the video and i realized like i have a few things to clarify um first one is i forgot another brand and this is called waffles and cream and this is like a, a skate brand this is like part of it's like similar to our motherland like they just skate around nigeria I make merch for like the skate brand so that's a good brand to check out um these guys actually take skateboarding seriously. Um, uh, another thing I wanted to say, if any of these brands see this video and you want to send me free clothes, you know I'm the god of plugless shames. Send me free clothes, thank you very much. And um, the reason why I'm so supportive of these independent Nigerian brands, apart from the fact like I actually know some of them and I was in Nigeria for a bit, is when I interned, as I always say, I interned for Deploy London and Stella McCartney. They're both sustainable fashion brands. And I started learning about like the effect that fast fashion has on fashion, the damage it does to the environment. And like ever since then, I stopped buying fast fashion. So um, with these brands, they're not expensive, like for what they are. So the, a lot of these brands have like really high quality cotton, so heavyweight cotton tees, um, hoodies, sweatshirts, stuff like that. And um, it's like some of these t-shirts are like 35 pounds, 40 pounds for heavyweight 
um, cotton t-shirts. So would you rather buy some like 20 pound fast fashion thing or like 40 pounds for something that will last way longer, not fade and um, is made ethically? So that's a good reason why you should like invest in these brands. Um, just check them out really. And um, another thing that people have been asking me about is my um, sponsorship. When on my last video, I um, put in the comment section that I had a new sponsorship and how that came about. So there's, as you guys know, I live in London and Nigeria, but I go to university in a city called Leeds, which is about a three hour train away from um, London. So in the holiday, I'm in London. And then during time time, like university time, like now I'm in Leeds where my university is. So there's a fashion store in Leeds called the Allotment Store. And this store stocks brands like Rick Owens, Tom Crom, um, Isabel Bonato, Yoji Yamamoto, Andy Mila Mista. So loads of really interesting brands. Uh, Maharishi um, represent clothing. So uh, the reason why I really like this brand and the reason why I used to go there all the time was most high-end fashion brands, when you walk in, there's this hostility, like you can't touch anything and if you touch anything, um, you have to buy it and stuff. Whereas this was the first store where you touch anything, he's like, do you want to try it on? Like he lets people just come in literally to style the clothes. Um, near the shop, there's a good, um, there's a nice rooftop and people can shoot in his clothes and like return it and stuff. And like, he's so cool with clothes. So you can really look at all these intricate designs like Andy Milamisa does and get more into clothes because he lets everyone just do what they want with the clothes. It's like the least hostile store ever. And I just like the store, so everyone I used to see in Leeds, I was like, yo, go to that allotment store, it's quite sick, it's quite sick. They've got Andy Milamista, Rick Owens, whatever. And through me, loads of people started buying loads of clothes there. So he would ask people, oh, how do you find out about us? And they'll say my name. And then I think I talked about it on the channel a while ago. And then four people made orders online and then they have this forum where they ask, how did you find a store? And then um, people were saying from the Fashion Archive YouTube channel. So he contacted me and he was like, you know what? Um, let's just make, give you a code. So if anyone um, buys it and is from you, then that's how we know like the person came from you. So the code to use at the allotment store um, is IO10. And that gives you 10% off every single product, including products on sale. And Another good reason why you should shop at this store actually, and it's not even because I'm sponsored or anything, it's genuinely, like that's literally why I go there, um, is a lot of the prices are a lot cheaper than anywhere else. Um, Essence, that's why I always say like Essence charges disgusting prices, because in the allotment, like, prices are always cheaper than Essence. So if you're into Rick Owens, Anthony Lamisa, those type of brands, and you buy from Essence, you might as well buy from the allotment, because it, it's 100% going to be cheaper all the time, all year round. And yeah, back to my code though. My code is, it works all the way until February 2020. So yeah, that's a good, that's a good code to use. Plug, support your boy. And uh, yeah, subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you're new, like this video. Obviously I talk about fashion, it's called the Fashion Archive. Stay tuned for more videos. I'm trying to make like videos that I don't see on um, YouTube. Like no one really talks about the Nigerian scene or like stuff like that. Um, you know, just switch up the content. But um, I'm trying to make a Paris Fashion Week recap. So I've asked people already like what brands they want to see, but um, obviously comment down below what other brands you want to see and I'll consider which ones will make the final video. And on that note, I'm out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the recent support. I'm at 3K subs. Never thought this would happen. Literally took me three years to get to 200 subs. So thanks for all the support and I'm out. I actually want to make it right, so, because obviously if we're going to talk about them, might as well. Yeah. Do it properly. Yeah. Um, let's see who else going to talk about. I just say, ah, oh, guy, you didn't put me in the video. Yeah, let me, let, let me think. <laughs> All these guys find the video and then, ah, oh, guy, how fun. Because oh, I, 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 I